All right, I'm, I'm going to begin solving this. Now, some of you might notice uh, an issue with the way I solve this as I go through it. That's fine. By the end, if I stop and you're like, there's still something wrong with it, then you can tell me. But for now, just stay with the order that I do it in. 10 to x equals root 3. Now, this is, again, another exact value. You sort of, you know, I'm intending to see if you can muck with it even if you have something messy. This time, that's not what I'm focused on. So I have helpfully included my uh, 1, 2, root 3 triangle to help you recognize which angle is the first angle that will give me a solution to this. It's going to be 60 degrees, right? Because look, uh, tan 60 is opposite on adjacent. That's root 3 on 1. Okay? So I can say 2x equals 60 degrees. Okay? Noticing that I've got a 2x in there, not an x. And there's another solution, at least. I mean, usually I get pairs of solutions when I'm in my normal domain, not to 360. The period of tan is every 180 degrees, right? So not only should that be a solution, but this plus 180 will also be a solution. Okay? So far, so good? Is that right? So I've got two solutions. There's nothing wrong with what I've done so far. But of course, I haven't finished solving this thing. Uh, I've got 2x over here, and what I really want is x. So therefore, if I go from here to here and divide by 2, then I'm going to go from here and here, and also divide by 2. So these are two solutions. And these solutions are right. They're just not the only ones. Okay. So I want you to remember, I asked you, I made a point of asking, what kind of modification of this, uh, of the original tree function, is this? And you said to me it was a... Frequency change, right? Now, tan 2x, is it more frequent or less frequent than the regular tan graph? It's more frequent, right? Instead of um, one copy of the graph from 0 to 180, you're going to get two copies of the graph from 0 to 180, okay? Which is why, see these two solutions, do you see they're between 0 and 180? Look, you've already got two solutions when you've got an angle less than 180 degrees, right? But the graph doesn't just stop. It gets compressed, but it gets more and more copies. So if there are two solutions here between, and you might even like to write this down, between 0 and 180, then it says to reason, if the original tan graph was periodic every 180 degrees, then this guy, which is twice as frequent, is periodic every... 90 degrees. So therefore, I'm going to get more copies between uh, different color, between 180 and 360. Okay. So that period of 90 degrees, you can see. Look, there's the gap, 90 degrees, right? So in addition to these guys, I'm going to go 90 degrees again, and then I'm going to go 90 degrees one more time and have an awkward number of ores in there, okay? And this is what the actual solution is. There are four points at which this graph intersects with this. You could draw it if you like, but it gets a bit repetitive, so I'm going to not do it. So how can I work out a more systematic way of solving this kind of thing, which is not just going to help us here, but will also help us for the next question, which is not about frequency, but there's a similar issue. Here's what I would suggest. Where you've written down this is like your first line, like I have, okay? It's pretty standard procedure to not just write the equation you're solving, but also the domain you're solving in. Okay? Now, because we're solving within the same domain over and over again, I get it if you haven't written it down, like I haven't, I've been a bit lazy. But this time, let's do it, because I'm going to help you see something here that will be useful for you. If I'm solving for x between 0 and 360, then for 2x, I'm actually solving in a broader domain. Here's how you can see that. Remember from this line to this line, what I did was I divided by 2, like so. Right? Well, if you're solving, therefore, in 2x, then you can take everything here in the domain and multiply by 2, and just sort of reverse it. right? So if I've got 2x in the middle, when you double 0, what do you get? It's still 0, so that's fine. But when you double 360, you get 720. So actually, you should be thinking from this line, I shouldn't be just solving from 0 to 360. I should actually be solving from 0 to 720. 
And that means that at this point, you recognize, wait, there's not just two solutions. This guy goes for a really long time. You get more solutions. You get this guy and you get this guy. They're still between not and 720. So they're still legitimate solutions if you're solving tan 2x, not tan x. Okay. You've recognized all four solutions, but then of course you don't want to solve for 2x, you want to solve for x. So you divide by two just like we did before, and there's your four solutions. Does that make sense? So maybe you want to do this um, 2x 720 thing and put a box around it. And what I want you to label it as, like what are you doing here is, recognize the changed domain. Okay, This is a really, really common thing for students to muck up because we're good at solving from 0 to 360. You've practiced solving from 0 to 360 till you're, you're blue in the face, right? But um, when you modify the function like this, will you modify the domain as well? So let me show you how this is going to look for the next one, number four. What is this? A sign? It's a sign, right? Yes. Okay. So this time I'll hold your hands through it so you can, bless you, you can work out what's going on with me. I'm going to write down the domain. The domain is 0 to 360. Sorry, that should all be inclusive. Okay, so I'm solving for x between 0 and 360, but that means if I'm solving actually this guy involving x minus 250, I've got to take all of these and I'm going to subtract 250. So in the middle I have x minus 250, that's what I'm actually solving. What's 360 minus 250? 110. And off on the left here I've got negative 250. So this is what I'm actually solving, okay? So we'll keep this in mind. Keep it sort of tucked in the back of your head. Now when you look at the actual equation, you're solving for root three on two. That's a nice convenient angle. What's the first time you get a solution for that? Think, exact value. I've got the triangle there. Surely it's gonna be 60 degrees, right? Opposite on hypotenuse gives you root three on two. So 60 is where I'm at, is that okay? So I'm going to write down x minus 250 degrees. The first solution I expect is 60. Okay. Now, think for a moment. Is this in our modified domain? Does it check out? It's okay, isn't it? That's fine. Now, normally what would we do? Well, we would look at... Mm, do it over here. Normally we would say, oh, I'm from 0 to 360. So you would draw your graph from 0 to 360. You'd say, what solution have I got? Uh, let's see, that's 90, isn't it? So I've gotten this solution. And then what would you do? What would you do from there? You'd say, 60 degrees is my first solution, what's my next one? Over there. Look at the symmetry of the graph. If you went forward from zero, 60 degrees to get the first solution, look at the symmetry of that first bit there, that bit there. So you've got to get the other solution by going backwards 60 from 180, right? So your next solution be, would be, 120 degrees. That's normally what you would say, right? But I'm not going to say it this time. Can someone tell me why? 120 degrees is outside this domain, right? So it's not going to be a solution for this. So I'm not going to write 120. In fact, what I've got to do is recognize that this is the real domain I'm in, right? From negative 250 to 110. So this time I do want you to draw this. This graph is not to 360. So I'm going to stop drawing it there at 110 degrees. That's how far my graph actually goes. And now I've got to go to the left, negative 250 degrees. What's that going to look like? Hmm. Let's see here. I'm going to get at least that much. How far does that take me? That's going to be negative 180, right? And then I'm going to have to go, I'm pretty sure, a little bit more like that. Okay. Um, I don't get quite to the stationary point. Does anyone know why? Where's the stationary point at? The turning point. It's negative 270, isn't it? And I haven't, I haven't got there. Okay, so I've stopped a bit short. Right, so root 3 on 2, remember I got my first solution over here. So I'm going to look backwards and I'm going to say, how am I going to get that solution? How am I going to find that? This 
tricky. This requires some thought. I'm not going to give you the answer yet. Think, look at the graph. How would you work it out at this point without my help? What do you reckon, Celine? Um, negative 180 minus 6. Okay, so negative 180 is here. Agree? Right. Now, one of the ways we could get a solution, like this one that was busted over here, was 180 take away 60. That would have given us a solution, except it was outside the domain. Okay. That's at 180. Well, if I go back exactly 360 degrees, that'll take me to negative 180, as Selena suggested. Why is going backwards 360 degrees, why does that give me a legitimate solution? 360, what's special about 360? It's a full revolution. It's a full revolution. It's the period of sign, right? So if you got a solution here at 120, you'll get another solution 360 degrees before it, before it, which is minus 200 and... 40. Do you agree? Do you see? It's within the domain that we've modified, right? It's just within it, just like our other solution was just out of it. Okay. So we abandoned 120, we said forget that, but if you go back 360 degrees, you'll get another solution, because that's the period of science, how long it takes to get a full copy. So if 120 was the solution, so is this guy. Okay, is that all right? You may even like to write down. The way I got this was 120 degrees minus 360 degrees, okay? Um, if I wanted to, I could go the other direction too. I could go 120 plus 360, I'd get more solutions, right? You can always go backwards and forwards 360 degrees. Okay, good. Are there any other solutions gonna, that are gonna be within this domain? The answer is no. How do you know? How do you, how can you argue that there aren't gonna be any more? Yeah, sure. Because you're like stretching the edges of the ring. Okay, good. Like I've I've gotten to the edge. Right, look, minus two forty is right next to this, and sixty is pretty. Cool. We already worked out. I can't get any more solutions this way. Another way you could argue it is just to look at your graph. Right, my graph is not very good, but it's good enough to show. Look, one, two solutions. I'm not. I'm definitely not going to get one in between. So I'm done. Okay. Right. I have solved for x minus two fifty. I don't really want x minus two fifty. I really want x. So what am I going to do to both sides? So I'm going to add 250 degrees. So that gives me 310 or 10 degrees. Both of which are in the original domain for x. Make sense? 